Hello, everybody. Today, I will, I'm gonna sit down and show you my my painting technique. Um, but before I do that, I'll explain how I I got to this technique, and that is because um, I am one third colorblind, and <clears throat> you know I kind of realized it when I was a teenager. I used to work at a lumber company and load lumber all day long and at the end of the night i drive home late down this one main road and of course uh, after a certain time the lights would flash yellow or red at the intersections and uh, i couldn't tell which was yellow and which was red kind of throw me off and I wouldn't know until I drove up to the light and saw the position of the light and that's where I kind of first started realizing I was colorblind but I didn't fully know it yet until uh, I started working at a studio and I was painting uh, a character on a poster and the art director said hey you know this is pretty awesome but why is why is this character's skin color green and I thought it was pink and I finally that's where it started occurring that I had this issue and it so I painted for years uh, in color but it wasn't until I saw this Drew Struzan video of uh, him painting the Hellboy movie poster that I realized, oh wait, I could do it this way. And what he would do was paint in black and white and draw in black and white first and then airbrush his color over the top and then go in and tweak it with color pencil after that. And boom, it clicked with me. So I started to, uh, drawing everything or painting in gray values first and so to explain how color blindness works I have what's called a red and green uh, color blindness and I can distinguish red and green a lot of times but there are times when the red and the green are side by side at an equal value that I cannot distinguish the two. And what I mean by value is if I were to take this red and green here and just desaturate it, whoops, let me <laughs> deselect. Uh, here we go. If I were to desaturate it, it's the same value of gray once you desaturate it. Can you see that? So that's my problem right there. Sometimes red and green look like that, not gray, but they have the same tone, same value. So that's where I learned uh, how to paint in gray, gray skill. So with this piece, um, what I did first was I laid all my color out flat in grays, just gray flat tones. And I'll take another layer, like right here, and I'll adjust the levels down to way down to a dark, a darker version of it. So on the layer above it, it's dark and it's light. And then I'll take um, my airbrush and crank it down to like way, f uh, airbrush eraser and crank it down to like three and four, and I'll slowly work my lighting out like so see I'll, I'll pick a focal point of light and then I'll slowly work build it out and the reason I, I chose to do it that way instead of trying to paint it in with an airbrush in a lighter color and directly paint is I can um, I can get exactly the right brightness and my highlights and my uh, my lighting without going over it so it kind of controls controls how bright it is 
uh, using this technique. And here, here you can see uh, I peeled away a lot of the lighting. I don't have really bright highlights on there right now. These these are just edge lights that I set the I cranked the airbrush uh, or I cranked the eraser up all the way and just peeled away to get that edge light. But um, so now, right now, since I've done the first lighting pass, I can now go in and hand paint uh, my character over the top on another layer and then afterwards I'll go in my next stage in the process and add in more shadow and then even brighter highlights and lighting uh, over the top of it so this process may not be the whoops may not be the right process for everybody but um you know, it's just the one I found that works for me, and I don't mind sharing it. Um, and in fact, I hope that somebody can uh, get something out of it and learn from this and apply it to their own art. And, you know, I'm not really concerned uh, about sharing it. You know, some the way you're going to draw is totally different than the way I'm going to draw something. It's totally going to look different. It's going to look like it came from your hand and not mine. Also, um, you know, when I was younger or, you know, even up until I don't know how many years ago, I've spent too much time worrying about why can't I draw like my favorite artist? I mean, man, I wish I could draw like that guy. I'll never be as good as him. And you know what? It finally occurred to me. I will never be that guy. So why why worry about it? Just don't let that even concern you. I appreciate that guy's work for what it is. And if you can learn a technique or something from the way that guy does it, even better. But don't don't kill yourself and and uh, rack your brain worrying about not being as good as that guy. Because you know what, you're never going to. Just be the best you, right? All right, so I got this stage done, this first lighting pass, and on the layer above the line art, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start uh, painting in and blending in some of this line work. And I like to keep a dark outer edge to my character and then blend in the interior uh, stuff. So. That's what you're going to sit and watch me do for a little while, and hopefully I don't bore you. <laughs> this is going to take a little while. This is probably the longest part of the process. So I'm going to start with uh, this beak here. And I'm going to pick that gray there. Oops. That's another thing, too. Drop your uh, pressure down or opacity down on your brush. So it's not super strong, so I'll just crank it in the 40s and let's see what happens here. So I'm able to go in and blend in this part of the beak. That brush is probably a little too strong. I don't wanna I don't wanna overly paint. I wanna like take it real soft and easy and and build up everything because you know that's part of the whole process you know you've you want to people tend to want to rush into it and not take the time they need to build something up and you just got to have patience and, and work with what you got and not, not rush into it and just take it take it slow. I mean, it may feel slow to you, but you'll be surprised once you start learning a process and an order to doing things uh, for yourself. I don't I mean, like I said, this technique isn't probably for everybody, but it works for me. And I get the job done a lot faster this way 
but I have to do it in an order. I can't, I can't just skip ahead across uh, to the next stage. You know, work on a stage at a time. <clears throat> of course, everybody wants to jump to to the in the stage that's like make it badass right away stage, and you can't. You gotta. You gotta work on your process, like you know, building shapes. Building shapes are super important to drawing. You just can't draw all the belt buckles and all the the cool little details. You gotta work on the flow and shape of your objects first, and make those look right before you move on to the cool detail. You know. And that took me a long time uh, to figure that out. I mean, I heard it. I heard people say it. I heard people talk about the foundations of drawing and the basic drawing skills. And, you know, when you're young, you don't want to hear that. You want to go straight on to what's cool. I mean, I had the How to Draw Comics the Marvel Wave book when I was a kid. And, you know, a lot of that stuff is true. Like what they tell you seems boring and is not the cool and fun part, but it's it's really important. You just can't rush ahead to the cool stuff. You gotta like learn how to have patience and build up what you're doing. So as you see right here, I'm, I'm just going in and blending a lot of this line work and still keeping some of the darkness in there. It's, it's fine to sometimes to just leave certain lines in, you know, if it helps punch up part of a an object. Like I might just leave the the eyes, the edge of the eyes, real dark with the line work. And it's okay to leave uh, to not have too perfect of lines and stuff in your art just leave the flaws in sometimes the flaws are what makes a piece of art interesting Probably leave those lines in too, right, right here in the helmet.
Anyway, I would love to be on the Duck Hills TV series. Oh man, I would so love to do that. Favorite show growing up as a kid. I wouldn't say that was the favorite because I had many favorites. Like I watched He Man every day after school, Thundercats, G.I. Joe, loved G.I. Joe. What really stunk was that um, you know you had to have cable in order to watch G.I. Joe as a kid. So you know you're always jealous of your friends that <laughs> that could go home after school and watch it. I don't know about you, but I like uh, finding something fun to draw about certain things on characters. And I've become fascinated with eyes lately. Really, really dig drawing eye irises and whatnot. I love drawing ears on characters. I think ears are so much fun to draw. Whenever you get to working on something, you always think you're done with one thing, and then there's always one more thing you forget.
apologize if I'm getting a little quiet. So in some of my other videos, I, I kind of zone out. And I like to, if I really have to work on a heavy deadline, I try to um, try to cut out all music and distractions. Probably the only thing I can really listen to while I work and not get slowed down is podcasts. Love to listen to podcasts. I don't know if anybody listens to any. I recommend Surviving Creativity. That's a good one. I love listening to uh, cartoonist Brad Geiger and Scott Kurtz. Talk about uh, about stuff within the the cartooning community. And I like to listen to um, a lot of Kevin Smith's podcasts. He's really gotten good at it. I mean, the guy likes to talk. He can. He can just ramble on and on, but I don't get bored listening to him. It's a lot of a lot of fun. I love his show, Fat Man on Batman, which had been coming out so regular lately. And then Hollywood Bab Babylon, I really like that one. someday I'd love to sit and hang out and talk with him sometime. Anyway, I, th I think where I first figured out to just work a lot quieter was the, in the Richard Williams book, an animation, uh, one of the wise old Disney artists pretty much said the same thing, cut all music and distractions off. And the reason is you can you can spend you can waste more time when you're distracted than when you have quiet because I've learned I've learned a couple things and I still have a I still have a bad habit of wanting to stay up late and work long hours I mean, but I learned with a lot of rest and very little distraction to get a lot more accomplished in just a couple hours, like two to four hours, than you would in an eight, nine, 12 hour work day. And you can crank that much work out in that amount of time And trying to do it the way you've normally been doing it, just by cutting out a distraction and getting a good night's rest, which, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm pretty bad about following those rules sometimes.
Get your rest, kids. Recently, I <clears throat> I worked a whole lot of hours in the last few days, and my eyes got bloodshot, and then in turn that caused an abrasion on my eye, where my eye was, you know, irritated. And so better part of a whole day I could barely see out of my eye and bright light really hurt my eye and that was really dumb it's just dumb This takes a while. It takes a lot of patience.
So I hope I'm not boring you. <laughs> Let me double check and make sure I'm still recording. Yep, still recording. Like there. Yep, so at this point it's just a lot of blending and adding detail. on the next arm.
lost the color, lost the darkness. There we go. That's better. Sometimes too, it helps if you've got a second monitor to have everything off to the side and smaller, like a smaller image of what you're working on. So you can kind of judge what it looks like at a smaller scale. See it has a hole rather than just an individual piece. I don't know if that makes sense, but you get a better eye for it when you zoom out. You can see how it works. Your lighting and whatnot. Right here, I'm going to take these little divots and I'm going to turn white.
Sometimes.
know if many of you guys know that I am working on a Warner Brothers cartoon called Wabbit. And it's a new Bugs Bunny TV series. Other than that, I cannot say too much more about it. And I couldn't tell you exactly when it's going to air, but um, we've been working on an entire season for quite a while now. And it's looking pretty good. I'm having the time of my life. that little crest and so I'm going to erase it erase what I've done mm. uh, excuse me well there went some sort of rating is belched
I'm gonna get finished with all of this. I'm gonna go in and uh, add some more shadow uh, detail. And that's gonna be my next step. Like, well, you're adding some shadow now. Yeah, I am, but not. You'll see once I start the next phase. Be like, oh wow, that really pops out. You know, I'm probably just going to leave those cross hatches and map it to point them out so they're a little more subtle. It's going along well. I'm going to have to sit now. I've been standing this whole time. I've got it set up to where um, my desk is a... It's, it's set up to where I can stand and sit if I want to. And get up on my feet.
It's the blending stage takes a good while blending in. Everything. Be done someday. <laughs> but we're gonna get to see the whole process. Sit with me through every aching minute. If you don't own a Surface Pro, I highly recommend it. Built machines throughout the years, bought computers, and I am absolutely surprised at how powerful those tablets are. It's mind blowing. At the same time, got mine hooked up through a digital uh, mini DV cable to my Cintiq. I'm able to run everything smoothly. I'm on, if you notice, I'm on the darker gray layer. And I'm going in and chilling voice and on that gray real quick. It's going to be a little bit lighter. the paint layer. I'm going to switch to the airbrush so I can smooth out some of this um, this paint work. Seems to be a pretty good year for movies. <clears throat> I thought Tron was pretty good. I quite enjoyed it. I had a fun time. It's a good popcorn movie. And I really liked Mad Max. That was a lot of fun too. I'm surprised at how good it was. I wouldn't say it's like, you know, in my mind though, I mean, it doesn't hold up like Road Warrior, but I'm willing to bet if I went back and watched Road Warrior, Road Warrior doesn't hold up and this is a better movie. So. I wonder to some degree like how much is like real stunts and what isn't in that movie because I'd be so amazed if a good chunk of that was real uh, live action stunt driving and exploding cars and stuff. So if you look now, I'll turn this layer off and you can see uh, how much work I've done. I'm not even going to bother blending the feet. <coughs> Here, 
I'm going to work on the Thor's hammer now. Better with the highlight lighter area there. It's looking pretty decent. I might be able to go on to the next stage. Maybe I should uh, make this video short and then do a new video. that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop right here. I'm at a stopping point and I'm going to start a second part and uh, show you how I start adding in more shadow and more light and then adding highlights and then go to my color phase and then boom, we're done. Alright, so let me stop this and I'll see you on the next video.